Good morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm getting real shaggy. <laughs> Need a haircut. Um, got a, several things to cover here this morning. My goodness. Um, I want to thank everybody so much for sending me news and links and articles. I really appreciate it. And uh, first I want to mention now... I don't know Italian. I did use the YouTube auto uh, translate for this video, um, but it's still off. You know, they're not the best in translating. Um, but it is the YouTube channel Spiritual Investigation. And thank you so much, you know, for this because it's a news item. And Excuse me if I'm wrong, but from what I can get with the subtitles that Brazil is investigating Jehovah's Witnesses Watchtower for the child abuse problem and for not reporting it. And nine victims, and it appears from the subtitles that the authorities raided some watchtower properties and confiscated some of this uh, some of their files and so I'm going to put the link down below to this and also um, we watched a video this morning while we were eating breakfast and it was brilliant brilliant thank you sweetie so much XJW Smurf Girl has put up a video is called JW Bible Study Google's 1975 great reaction we were laughing because it was so funny because you can actually hear in the JW's tone of voice that you can hear the brain misfiring because she is I mean it's not computing with her <laughs> you know what she's telling Smurf girl is the society never, you know, said 1975, it was some Jehovah's Witnesses, but that's not what she is seeing. And yes, these articles are still available on the JW.org library, but I'm going to put the link down below to this brilliant video, Smurf Girl. And there's so many XJW videos, you know, we apologize that we just have a hard time keeping up with all of them. There's so many newbies. My goodness, I started making a list and it's like, good grief, I'm going to be here for 20 minutes. So, you know, just put in XJW into YouTube and so many videos come up. So, you know, this is great. This is great. Um, and I also want to thank Laura in Australia. Thank you, Laura, so much for sending me the link to the Newcastle Herald article. It's an update. Uh, let's see, this update is from May 4th on the, um, and I've kind of been c covering the Australian Royal Commission redress scheme, you know, the Joint Select Committee. But this article, um, it's similar to the one I did last week. Um, but I'm just going to read some of this. Um, you know, in the Royal Commission, they were really concerned about the survivors at the heart of the investigation, and it published its proposal for a national redress scheme more than two years before it finished its work. And to compensate an estimated 60,000 victims, the Commission recommended a top payout of $200,000. Well, then they have in blue, reduced in legislation to $150,000 and reckoned the overall cost at $3.5 billion. Okay, and they go on. Um, the report cites witness statements that at least two high-profile churches, the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Churches of Christ, had no intention of joining and so now the parliament is deciding what they want to do with these organizations and um, 
well, like right here, it says the federal government says it will name and shame organizations that fail to join by the end of this year. But Ms. Clayton and others say the best way to bring these bodies to heel is to remove their tax-free status and any government funding they receive as charities. So, you know, we know time is running out because they have until the end of June to join. And I agree with several who have been talking about this and who have mentioned this. I don't think Watchtower has any intention of joining either because then they're going to have to admit guilt and responsibility and they might even have to apologize to victims. My goodness. Now speaking of victims, um, last week I had mentioned the two cases in Montana and you know I've got the court documents to one of them um, and I haven't had a chance to read through the ones I do have but you know from what I am hearing and I know some of you have been giving me details I didn't want to mention details in my video because it's so disturbing but I will say um, it appears that it um, involves child trafficking with several several brothers, JW brothers, involved in this. So, you know, it, it, it's a really bad, bad couple of cases. And um, so we'll keep an eye on those also. Now, also, I have heard from uh, two Pimos in Canada now and uh, the one said that, thank you sweetie, that the congregation can't afford to pay their bills because they're still shut down and witnesses are still self-quarantined. So, is Watchtower going to start putting these kingdom halls up for sale? Someone else told me that um, they're not planning on having meetings at the kingdom halls in Canada until at least September. So that's going to put a big dent in Watchtower's donations, I think, especially with so many worldwide out of work. I mean, how can you give donations when you know, you're wondering where your next paycheck is going to come from? And also, that they're not expecting the preaching work to resume until there's a vaccine and that got me to thinking it's like I know they've been mentioning vaccine 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 here in the United States and it made me wonder are they gonna require every single Jehovah Witness to be vaccinated for the COVID before they're allowed to have their literature carts or go door to door makes you wonder makes me wonder about someone like me who's allergic to vaccines even, even a tetanus I'm highly allergic to them because of the chemicals in them because I have a chemical sensitivity I had a tetanus shot three years ago it just about killed me so it makes me wonder you know are they gonna quit doing preaching work those who refuse to have the vaccine how are they gonna serve their God Jehovah if they don't want the vaccine they're not vaccinated. Makes you wonder. And also, someone else sent me this. It is a House bill that is in Congress in the United States here. I'm going to read this. It's HR 6666. Four sixes, yeah. Isn't that or ironic? to authorize the Secretary of Health and Human Services to award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing for COVID-19 and related activities such as contact tracing through mobile health units and as necessary at individuals, residences, and for other purposes. Isn't that scary? Yeah, isn't that scary? Or are they going to trace you? And some are wondering, you know, are they going to want to basically tag us whether we're 
COVID free or not and trace us. Some interesting things going on at this time. Now, um, I forgot to mention, um, I'm also going to put down below the link to a talk. Now, in Smurf Girl's video, um, she plays a clip from a talk that was given at a convention, if I remember right. It was by Charles Sanuko. And it's Stay Alive Till 75. If you have not heard that entire talk, I highly recommend you go listen to it. And I'm also going to put the link down below to our 1975 video we did because for those of you newly out Jehovah's Witnesses, yes, the society was preaching 1975. They did mention that date. I've got the articles, the KMs, to prove it. Now, in the last video that Mike and I did, um, we had been talking about, there may have been some confusion, so I just wanted to clarify. We were talking about policy makers and hypocritical journalists and stuff who preach at us to wear a mask, and then they're out and about or not wearing one. So I wanted to clarify, um, I believe the CNN journalist's name is Chris Como. And they're, like I said, we, we had just mentioned it in passing. Okay, he was not the one at the park or gym without a mask. Chris Como was the one that was in the Hamptons at his summer property and a bicyclist riding by seen the gathering and you know yelled at Chris Co Como hey you know aren't you recovering from COVID and the bicyclist pretty much got blasted so you know that's what we were talking about the Chris Como and I don't remember if he was wearing a mask or not but you can google it because even Inside Edition you know and of course Como is like Oh, well, it was just a small family gathering, and we were practicing social distancing. Well, that's not what the bicyclist, you know, says. And this happened in the Hamptons. Now, his brother, the governor of New York, you know, I wanted to clarify that. He gave a press conference, and he's sitting right by others at the table. And nobody at this table doing the press conference is wearing a mask that we could see. So, and it was the mayor of New York, de Blasio, who was at the park without a mask. So, you know, just hopefully that clarifies, you know, things. And um, like I said, you can Google it on YouTube. And the point we were trying to make is the hypocrisy. You know, when the governor of New Mexico was doing press conferences when this first began, she was telling all of us to wear masks and gloves. And here's a sign language interpreter standing right beside her. And neither one were wearing masks. So, you know, that's the point that we were trying to bring out is the hypocrisy. You know, they preach at us to wear masks and gloves when they're not wearing them and you know they're not following all the rules that they expect us to follow and that's the point we we're trying to make so anyway I hope you know you can glean something from this video and uh, Mike finally got his video done yesterday so I'm working on getting that edited and hopefully I can get it up this afternoon or tonight um, he did find some interesting stuff and so be looking for it and you might want to watch it because the name of the title is is watchtower wrong about their spiritual israelites and we all know what watchtower teaches those tribes those 12 tribes in revelation 7 4 through 9 watchtower claims they are spiritual tribes 
those are the 144,000. That's where they get that number. Are they wrong about that? So, we all look forward to watching that. So, you all have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.